Let's begin with phrase one. These six notes form a single gesture. This phrase easily divides into two rhythmic groups of short, short, long, short, short, long. The absence of metered time also eliminates metric accents. So where is the emphasis of this phrase? Dynamically, on the surface, it says to start strong and get softer, but I don't experience this phrase where the first note is literally the loudest point of the phrase. The weight of the gesture is influenced by the agogic accents in the measure. This is pretty similar to interpreting recitative in an opera where metered time is not as critical as the inflection of the syllables. Stressed syllables use longer note values. Uh, this leaves us with the two notes, F sharp E, a two note psi motive. Two, one. And this two, one psi motive is then decorated. Two, one. And the dynamic indication isn't merely stating that we should start loud and get softer. It's following the stress release pattern of the psi motive. Two is stress. One is the release of that stress. Two, one. Looking at phrase two, we have an elaborated repeat of phrase one. It elaborates the same two note psi motive with additional ornamentation. So until the final E in measure two, I want to make sure I hear the F sharp being sustained and decorated. Two, one, two, one. All that's decorating, two, one. If we continue to extract the longer notes out of the texture in measure three, we are going to be left with two groups of three notes divided by the provided dotted bar line in the score. These two gestures are of course related by transposition. Two, one, three, two, one, three. And in this third phrase, I start to hear the melodic gesture being split into two opposing lines. There's the descending side gesture, two, one, and a secondary inversion of that psi motive, two, three. To help me orally highlight these two motives as they separate from one another, I want to hear two, one, followed by two, three, two, one, two, three. I find this really helps direct the dynamic flow that's indicated by the hairpins of these gestures. They're building an intensity this way. It's also perhaps worth noting that all of the dotted notes in measure three are the resolution notes of the psi motives and they're rising by diatonic thirds throughout the measure. So we start out with B, A, B, C sharp, that's a third higher than the A, F sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, C sharp, E, G sharp. Those rising diatonic thirds are the resolution of those psi motives. All right, let's move on to measure four. Uh, we further divide these two voices that were separated in measure three. Uh, the long notes in measure four are the high B and the lower F sharp, the B being the focal point for the upper voice and the F sharp being the central note for the lower. Likewise, in measure five, the upper voice leads to C sharp and the final D belongs to the lower voice. Measure six is gonna start a new stylistically contrasting section. So before we move on to that section, uh, we should probably first consider how measures one and five fit together in context. So as I mentioned earlier, measures one and two are both elaborating a two note psi motive. Two, one. Both of them have that same motive. Two, one. Two, one. Measure two, of course, decorates it more than measure one does. 
that extra ornamentation in measure two is intensifying that gesture. It prolongs the first note of the psi motive, that is the note of dissonance, before the release on one. Uh, measure three is transforming this motive by simultaneously having the note of tension, that's scale degree two, resolve both down as expected, two, one, and resolving up, two, three, and so that's the inversion, right? It's kind of like, uh, what is that, cellular mitosis. It creates a lot of energy as one idea is being split into two. Uh, measures four and five really need to be paired together and related back up, uh, back to the buildup in measure three. So if, uh, the high B in measure four is a result of those consecutive rising thirds that we had from measure three. We had A, C sharp, E, G sharp, B. That B is that result of those consecutive rising thirds. And that's in the upper voice. And then the B rises up a step. Remember, that's the inverted psi motive up to the C sharp in measure five. B, C sharp, two, three. So that's measures four and five. The lower voice in measures four and five is dropping a third from F sharp to D. But I hear this third being filled in by the E on the downbeat of measure five. Uh, it creates a stepwise descent from F sharp, E, D, or three, two, one. To help me hear these large scale musical connections like I'm uh, presenting here, I want to divide these measures into two separate melodic lines that they represent. Uh, starting in measure three, the lower voice is going two, one, two, one, three, two, one. The upper voice is going uh, two, three, two, three, two, three. Now when I start to weave these two lines together, I still want to emphasize these groupings. So still starting in measure three, the lower voice is gonna go two, one, the upper voice two, three, lower voice two, one, upper voice two, three. Now the F sharp that's on the downbeat of measure four, it can be considered the beginning of an elongated three that connects all the way to the F sharp at the end of the measure. Uh, the upper voice B is going to be scale degree two. So then we'll move back down to the lower F sharp in measure three. So we'll have three, two, three. The E in measure five is, uh, is voice two, right? is the lower voice scale degree two. Uh, instead of blindly then leaping up to the C sharp in the upper voice, I want to make sure that I'm hearing its relationship back to the previous B in the upper voice. So I'm going to insert the B again before the C sharp to remind my ear of the motive that I'm wanting to focus on. Then likewise in the lower voice in measure six, sorry, in measure five, uh, I'm going to precede the final D in measure five with a repeat of the E prolonged from the beginning of the measure. So measures four and five uh, should be practiced this way. Three, two, three, two, two, three, two, one. That way I can really hear how those motives relate to one another. Um, to take that one step further is to apply the melodic line, all the ornamentation, back in. So starting in measure three, that would go like this. Two, one, two, three. Two, two, one, two, three. Three, two.
think that's enough for this video. Uh, we'll continue with the next section at a later time. Thank you.